This is a Toshiba Portage 3110CT. It's a shockingly thin and light ultra portable Pentium 2 from 1999. And although this is just about the coolest possible way to run Windows 98, that's not what we're gonna do with it. I'm gonna show you just how incredibly good Tiny Core Linux is. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy personal computing at the lowest possible point of the depreciation curve, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Like many ultra portable laptops from the turn of the millennium, the Portage 3110CT is a design of compromises. Sure, there's no optical drive or floppy drive, and most of the connectivity is relegated to an external port replicator that I don't have, but it still manages to pack in a PCMCIA card slot, microphone and headphone jacks, and a single USB 1.1 port. It has a relatively comfortable keyboard, though I have two annoyingly broken keys on mine, and an absolutely beautiful, glorious 10.4 inch SVGA active matrix display. Inside, there's a Pentium 2M running at 300 megahertz with the teeniest, tiniest sticks of RAM you're ever gonna see. Now, the sticker on this thing says Windows 98 or NT, but some absolute mad lad decided to install Windows ME on this thing, which is why we're gonna do the only reasonable thing and install a completely modern, up-to-date Linux distro on it. Yeah, Tiny Core Linux is basically magic, but getting that installed on here with no drives and no port replicator is gonna require some light shenanigans. So let's take this thing apart, peek inside of it, and I'll show you what my plan is. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, delete me. Okay, story time. When I was a wee young naive retro, I shared my full name and childhood home address on a vintage computing forum. Eventually, search engines picked up this post and then the data brokers got it. And for years, long after I moved out of my childhood home, that stupid address haunted me online. This is exactly the kind of thing that today's sponsor Delete Me can help to address. Since starting this very public YouTube adventure, I've made attempts to manually clean up my information, but after using Delete Me, oh boy, did they find a lot, including that stupid childhood home address. Well, Delete Me not only found this stuff, but they showed me a ton of the websites and brokers that have it and helped me delete it. I wonder if that's where they got the name Delete Me from. It is harder than ever to keep your private information private. And with all the dangers lurking out there online, like phishing scams, identity theft, it's more important than ever to protect your private information. Get 20% off your Delete Me US consumer plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash action retro and use promo code action retro at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash action retro code action retro. For a computer as absolutely teeny tiny as this, it is quite easy to get inside of. Just look how tiny this power adapter connector is. All right, we have our totally dead battery. And then there's just six screws to get into the palm rest. Nice and easy. Ribbon cable here for the mouse buttons. And a normal sized laptop IDE hard drive. No weird 1.8 inch thing in here, look at that. Let's see if we can figure out how to get into the keyboard. Yeah, there's our 64 megs of built-in RAM. I'd like to see where the CMOS battery is. Oh, there it is under here, because that is definitely dead and leaking. So we really need to get that thing out of there. So I'll just take a peek at this underneath my newfangled digital microscope and see if I can clean it up a little bit. All right, I think I did a pretty good job cleaning most of the gunk off. I just noticed something as I was putting this back together. I'm missing a whole freaking ribbon cable that's supposed to go from the USB port and microphone and stuff to the motherboard. So this USB port is just dead. Okay, so here's the convoluted way we're gonna get TinyCore installed on this thing. I'm gonna flash the installer ISO to an SD card, put the SD card into an adapter. We will boot the installer this way. And then I was going to have this 
on an external USB adapter plugged into the USB port, but since this is not even connected, we're gonna have to try to use this USB 2.0 card bus adapter to hopefully give us working USB. And we will boot from here, install to the external drive, then swap this drive inside of here, and hopefully it just works. So we'll use Belena Etcher to flash the installer to the SD card. Pop the SD card in here. USB 2.0 card bus adapter. And that gives us two USB 2 ports, which means I can also hook up the hamster mouse. All right, let's see if we can boot the installer. Hey, look at that. That is the tiny Core Plus startup with all these different options for window manager. My favorite is ICE Window Manager. And Tiny Core Linux is extremely interesting because, well, it doesn't work quite like any other Linux out there. Every time this starts up, it basically does a fresh install of Tiny Core to RAM. And then when it says loading extensions, that's loading all of your installed applications that you choose to have start up on boot into memory kind of also has a fresh install, which makes for a blazing fast Linux distro on just about any hardware since it's all running from RAM. Oh yeah, check it out. Here we are booted into the Core Plus ISO image. Oh, look how snappy it is. Oh, and the USB card works. Awesome. We have applications, TC install. We are going to grab core.gz from the mounted SDA boot directory. We're gonna do a whole disk install to SDB, which is our externally connected drive. Oh yeah, we're gonna get this Pentium 2 booting from MSATA. <laughs> that is ridiculous. All right, yep, we want all of this stuff. Sure, installer, application, okay. Proceed. Ooh, it's blinking. We are installing. All right, and successfully installed. Let's put this thing into the computer and see if it boots. Out comes you, and in goes you. I'm also gonna pop out this USB card for now, because I'd like to see if it will connect to Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, it's booting, look at that. And here we are in our brand new fresh install of Tiny Core Linux. First things first, let's see if Wi-Fi works. Ooh, it sees it. Oh my goodness, I think we are connected to Wi-Fi. Let's see, ping google.com. Oh yeah, we're online, look at that. <laughs> our Pentium 2 is online. We've got some themes here. Infidel 2. Ooh, a nice dark theme. I like that. And yeah, we have a control panel and uh, all right, wallpaper. Uh, let's get ourselves a nice gradient here. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Look at that. Ooh, I like it. Now, one of the interesting things about Tiny Core Linux is persistence. If we just shut down the computer, we would lose our customizations. We actually have to back up to disk so that we can reload all of our changes the next time it boots up. Because again, when it boots, it's basically doing a fresh install to memory, which is one of the ways it is so freaking fast. Look at that. Tiny Core Linux does have an app store and a package manager called TCZ, but we can go and get some applications, which Tiny Core calls extensions. I'm going to download Dillo, which is a very lightweight web browser, perfect for our 128 megs of RAM. We'll do a NeoFetch. Yeah, our mobile Pentium 2 at 299 megahertz, our Trident Microsystems Cyber 9525 graphics, and uh, 115 megs of RAM it is showing. All right, let's try out Dillo and see if we can browse the internet. Look how fast that loads. This is a modern web browser that can do HTTPS. 
Of course, this browser is extremely lightweight and don't expect modern websites to render all that nicely. Yeah, this is a perfectly reasonable modern Linux experience, but TinyCore Linux isn't just about laughing at extremely ancient computers as they try to render web pages. No, we can use it to get totally usable experiences out of computers that aren't quite as old, but still struggle with modern software. Like this beautiful ThinkPad X60S, which is a bit hampered with its 32-bit dual-core CPU. All right, I've got the TinyCore Plus image on the good old IOD. Let's boot off the virtual CD-ROM drive here. Oh, that's gonna boot super fast on this thing. And we'll just do a full install. And indeed, yes, that installed in seconds, and now we are booting into our nice, fresh install. First things first, of course, we need to change the theme. Good old Infidel 2, a nice pleasing gradient, obligatory Neo Fetch, and yep, we have a dual core Intel L2400 at 1.667 gigahertz. And look how freaking little CPU this is using. It barely even registers on the two cores here. I mean, really, all operating systems should be like this. Why are we spending so much of our CPU resources just to render a pretty operating system when we can have a totally beautiful looking operating system for almost no usage? All right, I really wanna show you the Firefox situation on here because it's pretty cool. If we do a quick search for Firefox in the App Store, we have a Firefox Get Latest application, which will download and install the latest version of Firefox. So we run the Firefox Get Latest script, it downloads Firefox, dependencies, and then packages Firefox as an extension for TinyCore and then installs it. Oh, look at this. All right. Let's get progressively heavier with websites and see how they load. All right, we've got Reddit. Dare we check Google News? Yeah, it's not the fastest web browsing experience I've ever had, but it's faster than it has any right to be on this particular computer. And look at that, look how little resources we're actually using. Yeah, we're not even halfway through the three gigs of memory. All right, dare we try YouTube. Let's see if we can look up my friend Ike's Vintage Tech, whose video on TinyCore Linux a few months ago actually reminded me how freaking good TinyCore Linux is. Yeah, he's installing TinyCore on a gateway Pentium 75. Oh, can't play it. Well, look at that. Well, let's leave YouTube up in that tab. Uh, let's see, Jelly Mario. Can we play some stupid web games? Oh, the device doesn't support WebGL. Yeah, this ThinkPad is pretty much my absolute favorite form factor for a laptop of all time. And I think it's one of the best machines that IBM ever made. And with a lightweight Linux distro, like TinyCore Linux, it's really a usable machine again. I think the battery works. Let's find out together. Haha, -ha, look at that. I will of course leave a bunch of links down in the description below in case you wanna try any of this fun stuff out yourself. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just wanna give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.